Hey classes, this is uh, the first lesson of the first week of the first day of school. And I'm going to combine all of these lessons because I want you to all learn the same thing at first for, for beginning choir, intermediate, and advanced choir, which are one choir together, and handbell. So this will be what you're going to, we're going to work on this first week, uh, is you learning the names, the letter names of the notes on the staff. So I'm going to uh, explain what the staff is and do all of that. But this is what you're all going to learn. You're going to practice daily. Turn in an assignment every day. It won't be long. I won't make it overbearing for you. But you will need to turn an assignment every day <clears throat> to get this done. And um, uh, it's because it's vitally important that you know what the names of the notes are. So we're going to, first of all, talk about what the staff is. Uh, the staff is the way we notate music. So when people started figuring out how can we write down music so that someone else can pick it up and play it somewhere else, uh, they came up with this system. And um, there are various, various aspects of, of this system that we'll discuss as time goes on, but today I just want to talk about the note names. Now, they could have named notes anything they wanted to. Uh, could have called them George and Fred and Gertrude, you know, but they chose to use uh, the alphabet, and that's what we use today. The staff is made up of uh, five lines and four spaces. Now, I understand that for uh, intermediate uh, and advanced course, this is, this is a refresher. You've already been through this in my class, but it's been a long time since we've been in school. And uh, I found years ago that the best thing to do is just go ahead and, and reteach it from the beginning. Because some of you will need, will have forgotten some things, and this should come back to you pretty quickly. Now, it's very important to understand that when we're talking about a note that's on the line or in the space, that's not the same thing as uh, when you've written, uh, you're writing something on notebook paper. All right, it's different. So uh, let's pretend this is a piece of notebook paper right now. And your English teacher wants you to write uh, something, an assignment, and they want you to write on the line. You learn this in elementary school. To write on the line means from this direction. So you would go, we need to, excuse my writing, it's sloppy, write on the lines. And that's writing on the line from that direction. You would not do it this way. I hope you can see that. Um, I think you can see it good enough to know what I'm doing. Um, you would not write it in this way. We need to write, etc. cetera. Uh, that is actually on the line if you're looking at it from this direction, isn't it? That's not what we're talking about when we talk about elementary music. We're talking about this way. But music does approach it from this direction, not this direction. So we will write notes on the lines. That is a note on the line. I'm going to pull this up a little closer. I am not going to edit these videos and spend all day trying to make it exactly perfect. I'm going to do just like I'm teaching the class, and you're in here, okay? So it will be very realistic. Uh, this would be a line that's in the, a note that's in the space. This is in the space. We don't think of it as being on the line this way. We think of it as being on the line from this direction. So this is a line. This is a space. Line, space line space line space line that's very important to understand in music because i think we're so conditioned to learning how to write in elementary school on the line that people can get that confused so i like to make sure that's clear to you so that's that is uh that's how we utilize these notes so you're you don't skip anything line space line space line space line space line use them all now when they first started using music, they actually connected. They had this a bunch of lines. They would continue like this. Let's say would continue like this and, on, and just keep on going. But it, it's too hard for the human brain to figure out what notes what. So we can see things in little small groups much better. So that's why they decided to divide the staffs into a, a group of five lines and four spaces. Now, we can write notes below that. There's one. That's in a space. If we want to create a, a line, we, we call this a ledger line. It's a temporary line to put that note on there to distinguish it from this bottom line on the staff. 
Uh, we just write it in our cells. The same thing is true up here. We can put a line here, a space here. A note on that, space. We can add lines, space, line, etc. But I don't want you to worry about that right now. We're not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother you with learning all those notes right now. That'll come later. I just want you to know the names of the letter, of the, uh, line, of the, of the notes on the lines and spaces on the stat. Now, typically, if you're in vocal choir, sopranos and altos, the women's voices, sing in what we call the treble clef. And basses and tenors sing in what we call the bass. Spelled just like the fish bass, but when you're using music, you call it, uh, it goes by bass. Clef. I just noticed that the video's backwards. I wonder I don't know how to reverse that. Uh, so don't worry about the spelling right now. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's uh, so we're not going to focus on the bass clef right now. We're going to come to that later. Right now we're just going to look, and if you're in hand bell choir, the upper bells, the smaller bells, ring uh, these in the treble clef, and the lower bells ring in the bass clef. So all we're going to do is work on these notes. So they go E, F, G, and that's all we do in the musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that is it, okay? So then we go A, B, C, D, E, F. Just, if I were to ask you to say your alphabet, A to Z, and say it twice, when you got to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, W, and on, blah, 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 W, X, Y, Z, what would be the first letter next? What would be the first letter if you said it twice after Z? Think about it. It would be an A, right? So, same thing in the musical alphabet. You only, only go to G. So, if I said say the musical alphabet this, or scale twice, you would go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What would be next? A. That's how you do that. It's not very hard. A lot of people look at reading music and think this must be really complicated. It's really not. So don't make it more complicated than it is. Now, there's an easy way to memorize these notes. So I'm going to show you how to do that. People, very, some very clever people came up with uh, some very pe clever people came up with little sayings for the notes. And there's all kinds of them. You may know some if they, you know them already. You like it. If it works for you, do it. I found that for teaching in the class, I have, and I'll explain the reasons later on, that this is the way you do it. This is the best way to do it, in my opinion, for teaching it in a class like this. So on the lines, the notes on the lines are E, G, B, D, and F. And we have a little saying for that. It's every good bird, some people say boy, but I like bird and have my reasons for it, does fly. Very simple. Every good bird does fly. If you'll get that in your brain, every good bird does fly. However you have to do that. If you have to say it 10 times to get it in your brain, 100 times, or if you just can remember it the first time, every good bird does fly. If I show you a note on that line and I say, tell me what that is, if you remember every good bird does fly, you'll know that note is every good, every good bird is a B. That's a B. If I showed you this one, you would go every, it's an E. If I showed you that one, you'd go every good bird does, you, first of all, you'd say it's on the line. It is on the line from this direction. And so since it's a line, the saying for the line is every good bird does fly. Every good bird does fly. There it is, F. Now, for the spaces, we have another saying. Well, it's not really a saying. It spells the name, it spells the word face. F A C E. Now, years ago, when I was teaching, first my first year at Bassett, I, I was laying asleep one night, and kids were having trouble getting this, and I think it's just because they weren't really trying that hard. But I thought, what can I do to get their attention? 
to make them remember it. So I came up with a wrap. Everybody loves it. It's great. It's fabulous. I'm a little scared sometimes that it's going to get me discovered and I'll have to do a, a rap career. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to tell them, turn down any big contracts. But anyway, it goes like this. I'm going to take, because these are in the spaces, right? So I'm going to take my face into space. I'm going to take my face into space. I'm going to take my face into space, yo. Eh. All right, so anyhow, that's how you remember. I'm going to show you something real quick. Be right back. Well, I can't show you right now. I can't get it off the wall. One of my dear students made a poster with me in a rocket ship, and I'll show it to you sometime. So, in honor of that rap. So, if you just remember, spells face. If I ask you what that note is, all you got to say, oh, it spells face. It's in the spaces. It's not on a line like this note. It's in a space. It must spell F. It must be F A. Oh, that note is an A. All right. If I ask you what this one is, you're going to go, oh, it's in a space. So I know that's face, F-A-C-E, that is an E. So what I'm going to do for your first assignment, and I want you to do this every week, I'm going to write some notes up here, and uh, every day I want you to fill out the notes below. And uh, at, the end of the, uh, uh, at the end of the day, when you do this assignment every day, I want you to do it every day. It should only take you about maybe five, ten minutes. It won't be a long assignment. I want you to... Do, I want you to email those to me, okay? So you take that, uh, you, you, uh, you're you going to write the note letter, na letter names down of the notes, and you'll email it to me. And I'm going to show you how to do that. <coughs> so it'll be like this. I'll have some notes written up here. Like I say, really should not take you very long. So let's say this is a sample. I'll probably have, I'll have it longer than that, but it won't take long. You'll go, is that a line or space? Hmm, I believe that's right on the line. So every good bird does fly it must be an E. And you'll write that E. You'll see this picture. I'll send you, I'll, I'll put a picture up here of the board. And so you'll write number one, and I'll have them numbered. One, two, three, four, five. So for number one, your answer will be, if you're on a piece of paper, you can type it or write it. You'll write number one, the answer is E. Number two, let's see, that's a space. So that must be F-A. Number two, the answer would be A. That is on a space, so it spells face, so that must be, number three must be an F. This is on a line or a space? You tell me, what do you think it is? I'm going to think about it for a second. It's on a line, right? Coming from this direction, right on that line. If I threw a note up here, it's plotted right there. If I took a piece of silly putty and threw it up here, and there it was, a Play-Doh, that would be right on the lines, and that would be every good bird does. Four would be D. Is that on a line or a space? It's on a line. Every good, number five is G. And we'll have, I'll probably give you about 25 or 30 of those. It won't, it won't take you long. And what you'll start doing as we do it every day, pretty soon you'll start recognizing these notes and won't have to say the sayings anymore. It'll just be, it'll come really natural. You'll start to see uh, that, okay, that's an A, F, D, G, I don't, you know, I've done this so long, I don't have to think about it, and you'll be able to do that too. All right, if you have any questions, please email me, and uh, it's going to be great. You're going to do good.